Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here each and every weekend at this time on this station to bring you, the Pennsylvania landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development. And of course, I, Doug Clark, have not, do not, and absolutely will not ever represent gas or pipeline companies. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, the Pennsylvania royalty owner, and I am very, very proud to do so. If you're looking for representation or learning about representation, give us a call. I would love to hear from you. We represent clients all across Pennsylvania and gas producing regions. 570-307-0702. I represent landowners for any and all oil and gas related matters, gas lease negotiations, pipeline negotiations, royalty, royalty deduction issues, breaches of gas leases, pipeline agreements, unitization issues, surface use agreements, selling, buying oil and gas rights, any matter related to oil and gas development, give us a call, see if we can help you, 570-307-0702. I'm going to start with a declaration, a pleading, a begging. Please, let's stop signing bad agreements. Stop signing bad agreements. You need to maximize each and every opportunity and interaction with the gas or pipeline company. I assure you, I assure you that they are looking to do exactly that. Maximize that interaction with you and you need to do the same thing. Laundry list, couple things. I'm gonna dive into some of these in more detail. Quick example, oil and gas lease. Presented with an oil and gas lease. Stop just signing. Stop just signing at bare minimum. Get a review and consultation by me, by somebody who knows what they're doing. Stop signing. Within the last month or two, and actually the client's signing now, gas lease offer, Western PA, $3,000 an acre, 15%. Signing now for $5,000 an acre and 18% and many additional addendum terms. Again, this is true. Landowner going to sign an oil and gas lease at $3,000 and 15% calls the office. We do a review and consultation. I say, look in your area. I think you may be able to do better. The market may be better within two months. Landowner signing for 5,000, not the 2000 per acre offered, but five, I'm sorry, 3000 offered, but $5,000, a difference of $2,000 per acre. If you had 100 acres, that would be an additional $200,000 that originated from a review and consultation, which took about an hour. Then we did some additional negotiation based on that review and consultation, and a bonus was increased by $2,000. And instead of signing for 15% royalty, the landowner signed for 18% royalty. Original offer, 3,015%. Thankfully, that landowner didn't, didn't just simply sign, but called my office, did a review and consultation, learned about leverage, learned about the market, and we went further and we obtained a $5,000, so it was an increase of $2,000 per acre, and we also obtained an increase of 3%, from 15% royalty to 18% royalty. One example. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So we're stop signing bad agreements and stop simply signing. Gas lease, one example. Second quick example. Just in the last couple months, company says, here you go, landowner. This is a lease that pays royalties without deductions. Very, very deceiving case. In my opinion, no doubt whatsoever in the world, that that royalty payment would be based on the wellhead pricing. Instead of just simply signing, 
The landowner called. We did a review and consultation. I explained, yeah, the reason why they're saying to you there will be no deductions is because they're selling it at the wellhead to themselves. And therefore, they can say to you, well, we sold it at the wellhead, so you didn't have any deductions taken. Then that person or that company that they sold it to went out to the market and is going to sell it at a higher price. So negotiate and the end result we have an agreement now that the landowner is going to be paid at the point of the first sale of their gas, listen closely please, to an unaffiliated third party. Meaning, the sell at the wellhead to the wholly owned affiliate doesn't count. When that gas goes forward and gets sold to actually a legitimate third party buyer in an arm's length transaction, meaning they're not related, they're not affiliated. That is the price this landowner is going to get. All originated from a review and consultation, again, which usually takes one to two hours in most cases. Sometimes even less, but usually one to two hours. That is going to be an extremely significant difference for the lifetime of this lease for all oil and gas that's being produced. That is, again, another fact, and thankfully, that person didn't just simply sign, but went and got information, not the information the company wants them to know, but the information that they need to know by somebody working for them. And by the way, I do this hourly. Almost every person I represent is an hourly basis. So just to say, legal fees then for review and consultation are typically one to two hours that's it. And I preach these all the time because time and time again, reviews and consultations lead to significantly changed agreements and at worse, at worse, and this isn't bad, at worse, the landowner fully understands the agreement they're going to sign, understands that they're not missing out on anything, understands the market, the pros and the cons, the good and the bad of what they are presented, and then makes the right decision for themselves. If you are not having a review and consultation by an attorney who knows what they're doing, then you, in my mind, are making an enormous mistake. And I tell you, I see it time and time again where clients have made significantly more money time and time again and significantly protected their property from future operations and impact that the people didn't want. If you are just simply signing agreements presented to you by the gas company based upon information presented to you by the land man who, I hope we know, works for the gas or pipeline company, not you, the land owner. If you are signing agreements simply presented based upon the statements made by the company representative, you, in my opinion, are making a major, major mistake. You need to at least have a review and consultation to make sure that you're not missing anything, that you truly understand the documents that are presented to you. Here's another truthful story. They're all true. <laughs> Let me just back up. They're all true. I recently had a conversation with the landman who works for the company, not the landowner, and we were talking about royalties, and the landman was explaining to me how these were royalties without deductions. I then explained to this person, no, that you maybe technically it's royalty without deduction because you're giving them the wellhead price, but in reality, this wording is unbelievably deceiving because it makes the landowner think that they're going to get the price that the gas is sold and there'll be no deductions taken. It doesn't reference the fact that the company is going to sell the gas at the wellhead to an affiliated company, almost certainly, and give you that price or an index price. No. The language and the representation is, is oh, hey, landowner, this is great. You're going to get royalty without deduction. You see a heading that says royalty without deductions. I'm going to tell you, red flags should be flying everywhere and you needed to talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about. I believe, oh, I know that I, in my discussions with this landman, 
educated this person about how deductions work, the difference between the deductions, enhancements, affiliated sales, and then the end result of everything was an entirely new royalty provision, which was substantially better for the landowner. And it all started with a one to two hour review and consultation. And if you're not taking advantage of that service, you're making a big mistake because the worst thing that can happen is you fully understand what you're doing and you know that you're not missing out on an opportunity maybe to increase or improve the agreement and you know the good and bad of the agreement and you know you're making the right decision for yourself based upon information that you need from somebody working for you, somebody trying to help you, not somebody working for the company trying to help the company. I do these reviews and consultations all the time, in person, by telephone, whatever your preference is. Give us a call. Learn about this service. Every person in Pennsylvania, before they sign any oil and gas related document, should have at least a review and consultation with an attorney who knows what they are doing before they sign that document. You can call my office. Again, Attorney Doug Clark, the Clark Law Firm, 570 307 0702 570-307-0702 and make sure you're tuning in each and every week for all things Marcellus my weekly radio show at this time on this station so again we're saying stop signing bad agreements have some more on my list here I just talked about signing bad gas leases where you might be able to significantly or otherwise improve compensation or addendum terms and also possibly change the royalty language. And there are a couple companies today out there that we have been able to routinely significantly change the royalty language to the benefit of the landowner. And if you are not exploring that, you are making a big, big mistake. Learn about these reviews and consultations. And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But learn about it. See about the service. Again, you can call 570-307-0702 and learn about the service. I was saying, don't just simply sign gas lease agreements. Don't just simply sign pipeline agreements. That is crazy. Don't simply sign pipeline agreements. And just as important if you signed a pipeline agreement a year two years or whatever years ago and that pipeline company comes to you with a new map with a new map and says hey we want you to initial or sign this map just even initial doesn't sound like a big deal initial the map Ladies and gentlemen, that may be an enormous deal. If you are presented with a new map to sign or initial, call the Clark Law Firm, 570-307-0702. That new map may be evidence that your old agreement that was a bad agreement that you entered into without any assistance that you were probably, in my mind, taken advantage of, that new agreement may be null and void, meaning may have terminated unless you sign or simply initial. Doesn't sound like a big deal. Initial the map. You initial the map, you may just revive a dead, no longer useful agreement. And you did it for zero compensation. No money. No better terms. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many, many times where people were presented with maps. They called me, called the Clark Law Firm, 570-307-0702. We did a review and consultation, determined that they had significant leverage to negotiate, not only for more money, but also to protect themselves, to limit the number of lines that can be installed in the future, to limit the size of the easement area, and many, many other favorable terms. If you have a map presented to you, and or it's presented to you by a landman who works for the company, not you, the landowner, and they're asking you to initial and sign, put your pen down, put your pen down, either call me or call someone that knows what they're doing and find out what your rights are. Those two initials, your first and last name initials, may be costing you potentially 
tens of thousands and literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. And you need to take advantage of whatever your situation is and maximize it. Because again, the companies prey on kindness of people. They think, okay, people are nice. People are kind. They'll feel bad for us. So they'll cut us a break. Well, the question is, are they going to cut you a break? Do they feel bad for you? And I'm going to tell you my experience is a resound no, that that's not the case. So you need to understand your rights. Then decide how you want to move forward. That is your decision. That's never my decision or your attorney's decision. That's your decision. But a good attorney gives you the information that you need educates you on the issues, explains the issues, maybe gives you some parameters and suggestions, but you then make the decision, a fully formed and educated decision. And how are you going to make the right decision? Is it going to be listening to the landman tell you what they want you to know, what the company wants you to know? Or is it going to be by consulting with somebody who knows what they are doing, who is there to help you, who is literally working for you, you pay them, they work for you. That's what you want to have. And again, we do these reviews and consultations. I know sometimes people get scared about calling lawyers. Don't be scared to call us. I'll tell you that. I do these reviews, consultations for people in Greene County, Washington County, Beaver County, Allegheny County, Westmoreland County, Armstrong County, anywhere in the southwestern part of the state, Tioga, Potter, McKean, Elk, all across central, Lycoming, all across central part of the state, Bradford, Wyoming, Susquehanna, all of these areas. Don't be afraid. Call and see if it's right for you. And if it's not, that's okay. But at least find out. And it's not that I'm begging for clients. I assure you, I'm begging to try to help people, to make sure that we're doing the best we can, that you're doing the best you can, because we need to make sure that you're not being taken advantage of because each and every week, each and almost every day, I see it happening, and we need to stop it. We need to stop simply signing bad agreements, and we need to get good information to make informed decisions by somebody working for you that cares about you is trying to help you. That's my goal. That's our goal. Okay, we're at the end of the first segment, and I'm just, just getting started. I am just getting started. Stay with me. Remember, you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can give us a call, see if we can help you, see if we're right for you, 570-307-0702. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. I will be right back after this super important message. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, you can call the office, learn about reviews, consultations, all representation, 570-307-0702. Of course, I have not, do not, and I will never, ever represent gas or pipeline companies. I'm here for you, the land owner. So, okay, sticking a little bit more with the theme of stop simply signing. Everybody, please put your pens down and get information. I'm very confident in the information that I will provide you, but if you don't call me, you don't call the Clark Law Firm, call someone that knows what they are doing. Pipeline right-of-way agreements. If you are just signing what is presented to you, even if you're negotiating on your own, that's your one pipeline right-of-way agreement. I've negotiated, consulted, and reviewed on pipeline agreements with over 70 different companies in Pennsylvania. You need that type of experience and understanding to really make sure that you're maximizing your situation. That's my opinion. I want to help you. That's your decision, however you want to do it. But time and time again, many, many times, People have been offered tens of thousands of dollars and have signed for $100,000, $200,000 more than what they are offered. But if you don't do reviews and consultations, if you don't consult with someone who knows what they're doing, if you're not looking to maximize your individual situation for you, your family, future generations, you're making a big mistake and you're going to potentially miss out on substantial opportunities. And other people aren't doing that. Other people are getting the information and are maximizing their situation. You need to do that too. If you're presented with a new map for a pipeline right-of-way agreement, 
Stop signing. Don't initial. Get information. Pick up the phone. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. But do not just sign these agreements. Do not just initial these maps. I have had many cases where we have been able to redo bad agreements that the landowner entered into year, two years, three years ago and get a second bite of the apple. Now that you're informed and you're not going to be taken advantage of again. What's the only thing worse than being taken advantage of once? Being taken advantage of twice. Well, I guess, of course, being taken advantage of a third time. So let's just rephrase that. What's worse than being taken advantage of once? Being taken advantage of more than once. And we have to stop it. And I'm going to take this time to again talk about HEP Tioga Gathering. Some people call Howard Energy Howard. If you have an easement agreement, an option easement agreement, or any type of other agreement with HEP, or also known as Howard, and they come to you and they want you to sign a map, my opinion, and I cannot, I want to scream this into the microphone. Put your pen down. Put the pen down. State, I will review this and I will get back to you. Pick up the phone, call the Clark Law Firm, 570-307-0702. Do a review and consultation. It literally will probably take one hour and you will only be billed for one hour. At most, they take two hours. But learn and understand your rights. Because if there is a change in that map, there is a good chance, good chance, the bigger the change, the better the chance that they don't have an agreement. And there's a really good chance, in my opinion, that you were taken advantage of the first time. And now you have the opportunity to not be taken advantage of again. And take the time, take the hour, take the two hours, have a review and consultation and understand your rights. Understand your rights. Those reviews and consultations have resulted in significant, I mean, 100,000, 200,000, and even more in payments in various cases. They've resulted in increases in royalty percentages and gas leases. They've resulted in significant changes in addendum terms to your benefit. They've resulted in increased re royalty percentages, change in royalty calculation language. That's why I say, and that's why I get so impassioned with, stop just signing. Get the information. And then, if you want to sign, sign. But get the information. And for the review and consultation, it's not much time or money. And time after time after time, clients and participants we do these review and consultations are very, very pleased and say, wow, that was really great. Thank you. I know so much more now. And that's what we want. You to know more and to know what you need to know from your side. Again, not what the company wants you to know, but what you need to know to protect yourself, your property, your family, and future generations. That's our goal. Our goal is not to ever not, is to simply not sign documents. That's not our goal. My clients sign documents all the time, but they sign the best possible documents that we can negotiate. The documents that are right for them, the ones that they're comfortable with, understanding the whole circumstance and the situation. That's what we want, and that's how you make the right decision. Go to the websites, you know, go to pagasleaseattorney.com, go to pipelineattorney.com. Learn, use those as a resource. Read the testimonials that we have on the websites. We want to help you. We want to raise the bar for everybody. And many times, you know, this is just one part of what I do, but I preach these reviews and consultations all the time because they really, really work. They really help landowners. And if before you sign, Give us a call and see if it's right for you. And again, if it's not, that's okay. But don't just simply sign these agreements because you don't know what you're giving up. 
You don't know what your leverage is. You don't know what you should know from your side by somebody working for you with the experience to help you that has seen how these contracts have been manipulated and interpreted and what you need to try to protect yourself. And keep listening to All Things Marcellus each and every week with me, Attorney Doug Clark, at this time on this station. A couple more things because there's some things I want to get into also, some other things. Multi-unit well consents. Susquehanna County, Cabot, multi-unit well consents. Stop just signing. There are things that you can do if you're inclined to sign. There are things that we do with these agreements that are to the benefit of the landowner and no one's going to tell you about it unless it's somebody working for you to help you. Multi-unit well consents. Stop just signing. Do a review and consultation. I do these a lot. And these multi-unit well consent, the reviews and consultations that we do, I do, almost always are an hour and sometimes even less. Rarely, and I mean very rarely, do they exceed an hour. So before you just simply sign what is put in front of you, learn about what your rights are and how you may be able to limit or refuse or whatever it is that you want to do. But learn and then make the right decision for yourself. Another point that I want to say and this one has me out of my mind. If you have a well pad on your property, please listen to this. If you have a well pad on your property, you may get a form from the company that has the well pad on your property asking you to consent for them. And it's going to be a DEP form and it's going to be entitled. Have it right here in front of me. Landowner consent post drilling well site restoration under DEP regulations after last drilling activity the company after a period of time say I think it's nine months or a year they have to by regulation reclaim or minimize that pad to a degree what they are doing what the companies are doing is asking you so if you have a 15 acre pad on your property, I have clients with 20, 25 acre pads on their property, some even more. If you sign this form, you agree that this pad can remain in its current condition for the lifetime of this lease, literally maybe 50 years, maybe a hundred years, could even be longer. You're giving them the ability to leave this open and take all of this property for as long as this lease exists, when the law requires that after a period of time, let's say around a year, they have to minimize and do some reclamation work. Why are you going to do that? Why are you going to do that? Why, why, why? Unless you want to use the pad for some reason and you have an agreement to allow that to occur, but otherwise, wow. Why would you be doing this? And people, what are they doing? They get something in the mail. It says, hey, sign this, return it to us in 30 days. Everything is great. They don't know what it means. They don't understand it. And now they've just agreed that they're going to have this 25, 20 acre well pad in its current condition on their property for the next 30, 50, 70, 100 years, possibly even longer. When there is no reason for you to do that, or very little reasons for you to ever, ever do that. But again, people are just signing without getting the information that they need to know. Thankfully, our clients, we do agreements, they get a pad, they give us a call, say, hey, you know, all my past clients are always instructed, hey, before you sign anything, send it in to me and I'll look at it and I'll tell you if I think we need to talk about it. If you have an agreement or a document that you're asked to sign, it very well may be a really big deal. It might not be, but in most cases, it's pretty darn important. And you better be getting advice as to what it is and why would you sign it or why would you not sign it. And remember, if it's something easy, not a problem, that you should sign, well, those discussions are really quick. Hey, this is no big deal. They're just asking, this is an example. They're just asking you if they can test your water. As a general rule, not specific advice for anyone, my recommendation always is have your water tested because it's to your benefit to have a baseline 
of the water test. And then also you preserve a presumption in law in the event that there is a problem with your water, either in quality or quantity, you preserve the presumption that the company is responsible. If you don't have that water test done, you lose that presumption. So that's a real quick thing. Hey, look, no big deal. Go ahead and sign it. Here's the reason why. Or, wow, you got a new pipeline map from HEP, Howard Energy, any other company. This really, if you don't sign this agreement, your underlying agreement has terminated or they're going to have to use the map that you already have. You have the ability to negotiate for more compensation, better language because you got taken advantage of the first time perhaps. And also you have the ability perhaps to say, hey, no, thank you, but no thank you and not end up having a pipeline on your property. Those are all possibilities, but you got to look at each individual case and see what's happening. But we have to stop simply signing these bad agreements or any agreement. Stop signing, do a review consultation, learn about it, understand good and bad. Why would you sign it? Why wouldn't you? And then make your own decision. Make your decision what is right for you, your property, your family. Make your own decision, but make it based on information provided to you by somebody who represents you, who is working for you, who's experienced in these issues, whose sole goal, sole goal is to help you to make sure you're doing the best you can. And we need to get to help to the people because the companies have super expensive lawyers, well-trained people to make sure that they're doing the best for them. We have to do the best for you. And if you're just signing documents, in my strongest opinion in the world, wow, are you making mistakes? Give the Clark Law Firm a call, 570 307 0702. And if you don't call us, call somebody. Don't just sign these agreements. Don't just sign these agreements. Don't just initial these maps. Don't just sign any documents. Get a review by me or somebody else, but learn your rights. All right, we're up against it. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station. Been doing the show now for over seven years. And guess what? We're nowhere close to stopping. Nowhere close to stopping. So once again, stay tuned for this important message from our wonderful, wonderful sponsor. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. This is a great topic today, so I'm going to jump in it. And look, it's real basic too. Stop signing documents presented to you without getting information from somebody working for you who's trying to help you, who wants to help you. Don't simply rely on the gas company or pipeline company landman who represents or works for that gas or pipeline company, not you. Think about that. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. So another super important topic that I've been talking about recently, and I'm going to continue to talk about because I am seeing it happen time and time again. Guys, stop signing amendments, modifications, and ratifications. Ratification states I am ratifying that I have a gas lease or a pipeline agreement. They'll typically state it's not violated. It's not in breach. It's active. Why are they getting you to sign this document? Because maybe, maybe your lease or pipeline agreement has actually already terminated. But by signing an amendment modification ratification, you have now given life to that dead agreement. That agreement that may pay you 12.5% royalty, full deductions, no addendum, allow for unlimited pipelines, no protections on surface rights. You sign an amendment modification and ratification. You may be, may be giving life to a dead document versus having the ability if you do review consultation, say, oh, wait a second, 
Here's why they're doing it, because it looks like my lease actually terminated. Now I know that I believe it has. And so in cases, you can have an opportunity to negotiate a new, a totally new lease for whatever the compensation rate is, for whatever the royalty rate is you can obtain, for whatever addendum terms you can obtain that are going to be to your benefit. These amendments and ratifications, especially the ratification, they're often like a page. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but the power in that ratification may be enormous, enormous. And let's just say an example. If you have a hundred acres, I taught before I had a client originally they were offered 3,015% for their gas lease. This is when it's been the last month or two. And now they're signing at $5,000 an acre and 18% royalty. Imagine if they were presented with, if they had an old lease and now they got a ratification and the company landman, company representative says to them, by the way, this is what they say. Oh yeah, we want to go do this and start drilling and get you a whole bunch of money. We just need you to initial or sign this form. If you're hearing that, put your pen down, put the pen down, pick up the phone, put the pen down, learn why this is occurring because it may be a great opportunity and why it is occurring may be because your old lease has terminated and by signing this new document, you're going to correct the problems of termination or potential termination in your existing lease or pipeline agreement. You're listening to attorney Doug Clark. This is all things Marcellus. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. It's okay. Again, resetting quickly. If you were, if you had a ratification and you sign it and you revive and give life to an agreement that has either terminated or probably terminated and you had a hundred acres and the market in your area was $5,000 an acre, literally, literally 5,000 an acre times 100 acres equals $500,000, one half a million dollars. If this is a hypothetical scenario to illustrate this point, if you signed a, re, a ratification, you may have then just given life to the old lease. Had you not simply signed the ratification, had you put your pen down and picked up the phone and called my office or somebody who knew what they're doing and some of this stuff is complex, you got to know what you're doing. Pick up the phone, say, hey, I got this document. I hear about a review and consultation. Can I do that? We then have a review and consultation and identify, do we think your lease terminated? Why is this being presented? And if it's presented because your lease is terminated and we're able to establish that, which we have been able to do in other cases, you now with 100 acres, if you're in an area of $5,000 an acre, you've now just signed a lease for $500,000. Instead of signing a ratification for a big whopping $0. I promise you, this can occur. That's why amendment modification and ratification, 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 those documents are powerful and they should not, as any document, just simply be signed. You have to understand why do they want me to do this? Why do they want me to do this? And I will guarantee you there is a reason. The question is, is it a reason because your other lease terminated, probably terminated because they can't develop your property unless you do? And you got to, you have to, you must identify why am I being asked to sign this document? And I'm going to tell you this, the answer of, oh yeah, we want to get your royalties and make you rich here. Look at this shiny object over here. By the way, here's the pen sign. No, that's not the reason. That's not the reason we need to identify the reason. If you are signing amendment modification and ratification, you literally may be reviving or giving life to a lease that is either dead, probably dead, or cannot be used under its current terms and conditions. I am seeing more and more, especially guys, please listen to this, especially leases 
that are before 2008, whether it be year 2000, Tioga County, whether it be years 1900s, Western Pennsylvania, or any older lease. These older leases often have terms that the company cannot develop under. So they come to you and they present you with an amendment, modification, and ratification and say, oh yeah, we want to get you money. You're going to be rich. Here's my pen. You need to put the pen down, pick up the phone, learn what your rights are, and understand why am I being presented with this document? Why am I being presented with it? And that's what we'll answer. That's what I'll answer. And that's what we'll investigate. And that's what we'll discuss. And you need to know that before you sign. Because imagine if you are going to give life to a dead lease that pays you 12.5% royalty and no additional bonus money versus my example of a person signing now in Western Pennsylvania for $5,000 an acre and 18% royalty. We cannot, we cannot simply sign these documents without understanding why and without, we can't just listen to the land man or the company representative who represents the company telling us why we should sign this or why it's being presented to me. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't, and we should not do it anymore. And it's been happening long enough that we now know better. None of this partnership, put my hand around your back, company man, oh, we're partners, partners, partners. Ask the tens of thousands of people in class actions making complaints against companies for inappropriately paying royalties. Ask those people how they feel that partnership is. We have to learn. You know, I get fired up sometimes and I really get off on um, attacking the company sometimes because I truly believe that in many, many cases, people are very, being treated very, very unfairly. And for my entire career, I have been fighting for people who I believe have been treated unfairly. I am so unfortunately blessed to have the position that I have now to represent the clients that I get to represent and to protect them and to work for them to make sure that they're not being taken advantage of. Imagine how cool that is. Imagine how neat and rewarding that is to be able to truly help people to help people like my grandfather who is a farmer and steel worker, to help people like my father who is a farmer and retired steel worker, to help people like all the other people that I grew up with on the airport road, Dime Road, Armstrong County, Pennsylvania. It is a gift and one in which I appreciate every single day because we get to, I get to help people like my family, like my neighbors, like the people in my church I grew up with. It is awesome. And that's why I say I have not, will not, and will never and do not represent gas or pipeline companies. They have all the great lawyers and expensive lawyers they can buy and need. You need, we need to get you this information. And that's how fortunate I am to be able to help people and to get that information to my clients. I know it may sound corny, but let it be because it's the truth. It's the truth. But I want to remind everybody, my clients, we sign agreements. They sign agreements all the time. We just work to get the best possible agreement and give the client the information they need to make sure that they're comfortable making the right decision and signing that agreement and it's right for them. That's what I do. We're not obstructionists. I'm not an obstructionist. We're just going to make sure, I look to make sure that each and every client is doing the best they can for themselves, that they know what they're signing, that they're comfortable with their signing, their questions have been answered by somebody who's giving them the answers they should have, not the answers that the other side wants them to have. I'm up against it again. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Before you sign any any, any document, I really encourage you, give the office a call, learn about reviews and consultations. 570-307-0702. And join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I want to remind everybody, if you're listening to today's show now and you missed the earlier part, you can always go back to pagasleaseattorney.com. That's pagasleaseattorney.com and pipelineattorney.com, and today's radio show will be up and posted tomorrow 
Monday morning, as are many, many hours of radio shows are available on the Clark Law Firm's website, websites, pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com, as well as a lot of other great information. Most common mistakes, frequently asked questions, information that you need. Think about if you are presented with a pipeline right-of-way agreement and you're not going to pipelineattorney.com just to check out the information available there. Again, use it as a resource, even if you're not looking for representation. Remember, it's not specific advice for anyone, neither is the show, but it's important that you become informed. Use it as a resource, but again, it's not specific legal advice. And make sure that you keep tuning in each and every week at this time on this station to join me, Attorney Doug Clark, for my weekly radio show, All Things Marcellus. I have been doing this show since August of 2010. So we have seven plus years of radio shows and we're not stopping because we have to get this information out and we must raise the bar. We must help and protect and inform Pennsylvania land owners, royalty right owners. We need to get this information out there so everybody does better. That's my goal. My goal is that everyone in Pennsylvania enters into agreements that they understand, that they are informed, that they know their leverage, and they've decided that this is the agreement and the time for them to sign. And you need, in my opinion, if you to make that decision, you need to get quality advice from somebody working for you, not somebody working for the gas or pipeline company. Now, I want to touch on some super hot issues and as you hear me often talk about Tioga County, but these issues arise elsewhere. But Tioga County to me is ground zero where I am seeing what I think are people being taken advantage of routinely. From my perspective, I believe it's a lack of information and a lack of availability of this information. And that's why we're trying to get this out there to you. So it's not just being educated, if you can call it that, or informed by the land man or company representative who is literally working for the other side and not for you. But you're getting quality information from somebody who wants to help you and hopefully working for you to make sure you're doing the best you possibly can. In Tioga County, right now, in my opinion, I believe that I, I believe this. I believe that there are agreements after agreements after agreements with HEP Tioga Gathering where the company is not fulfilling their requirements in these option agreements. They are not meeting their requirements. And I believe that many of these agreements have terminated, but the company is never going to tell you that. We need to make sure that you are not reviving, signing maps to bring to life bad agreements that you probably should have never entered into at the rate you did at the time you did. You are expected, and I say to all of my clients, I expect you and everybody expects you to fulfill the obligations of your agreement. You signed it. You agreed to it. Maybe you did enter into it with a lack of information, but you've, you, you had the ability to get that information. Maybe you passed on it. Maybe you didn't call me or call somebody else, but you may have a second opportunity not to repeat those same mistakes. And we expect, I expect you, I expect clients and the company certainly expects you to fulfill and follow the agreement you agreed to. Well, then shouldn't they do the same when they draft and create these documents and go out and get you to sign and you sign those documents and they breach or fail to meet their requirements, should they not be held accountable? Are they not supposed to comply with their agreements? And if they didn't and your agreement terminates, that's not your fault. You complied with your agreement. They need to do the same. You need to understand has your agreement been breached? If you have been 
and been told, received correspondence from HEP, Tioga Gathering, some people call Howard Energy, and they're saying they're exercising their option agreement. I really would love to hear from you. I'd love to do a review and consultation and explain what I think maybe your rights are and your circumstances. Look at your circumstances. And guys, this typically will take usually at most one hour, including me looking at the documents and us discussing what I think is the case and what I think your various options are. And if you're not taking advantage of that, if you're not taking advantage of that, I truly believe you're making a big mistake. So if you have had, or if you in the near future or anytime are notified by HEP Tioga Gathering, so again, some people call them Howard, Howard Energy, you're notified that, hey, we're going to exercise this option agreement. I would really recommend, look, you don't have to, but boy, I'd recommend you give us a call and do a review and consultation. If they are asking you to sign a new map, put your pen down, pick up the phone, love to hear from you and see if we're right for you. 570-307-0702. Your agreement may have terminated and you may be in a position to get a second bite of the apple to correct mistakes you made the first time when you weren't represented and you were told, hey, hey, everyone's going to be rich here, sign, sign, sign. Learn your rights and find out what can you do because I believe that this is something that is occurring a lot, and I mean a lot, where they are not properly exercising their agreements, which means if I'm correct, and I think I am on many cases, that those agreements have terminated and if the agreement terminates, you have the ability to renegotiate or bypass and say, hey, no, I'm no longer interested. But they have requirements. You are held to your requirements. They need to be held to theirs. And if you are simply initialing or signing a map, I am telling you, I think you are making an enormous, enormous mistake. I'd love to hear from you. Love to redo a review and consultation. Call 570-307-0702. Probably takes an hour. Probably takes an hour and you know whether, you know, what your rights are and what your options are. You're listening to Attorney Doug Clark. This is All Things Marcellus. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. And another thing, and sticking with Tioga County. Guys, if you or anyone you know are held in a unit by Sweppy, also some people call them Shell, due to a vertical well, a vertical straight down well that has been shut in, and especially if it's been shut in for five or more years, I really, really wanna hear from you. Because we have, in my last count, 175 vertical wells in Tioga County. 175 vertical wells in Tioga County that are placed in what's called regulatory inactive status, showing no signs of going to produce anytime soon. And they drilled these wells, my opinion, simply to hold your leases and not produce gas and not have to give you a new lease. We are, I am actively investigating this and I want to hear from you. I really want to hear from you because that wasn't your deal in your mind when you signed a lease. They were going to poke a vertical hole down and then hold you, pay you shut-in payments for year after year after year and not produce. That wasn't what you contemplated, and I don't think that should be allowed, and we're looking at it and seeing what we can do. Love to hear from you. 570-307-0702. All right, I'm at the end. Remember, stop signing bad agreements. Landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. I, Doug Clark, have not, will not, and do not, will not ever represent gas or pipeline companies. Give us a call, 570-307-0702. Have a great, great week, everyone. See you next week.